new intro so much love and appreciation to those of you who have been with me for the two-year period plus that i've been doing this um thank you for showing your uh love and support to the channel and to anybody else who is brand new to the platform and you would like to support the channel also you can do it by way of patreon anchor the clothing store and also the shoe shop that is listed in the comment description below and again thank you to any and all of you guys who have been here to support this channel during the two plus year period i wouldn't be able to do what i do every single day without you ellis seabold has remained silent after a man convicted of a crime against her was exonerated the award-winning author is at the center of a heartbreaking saga surrounding a wrongful conviction that resulted in an innocent man spending 16 years in prison for a crime he did not commit the author has yet to comment on the situation following the hearing a spokesperson for scribner seabold's publisher stated that neither alice seabold nor scribner has any comment scribner has no plans to update the text of lucky at this time man now 61 was previously convicted of a crime against the author when she was a student at Syracuse University. Quote, I never, ever, ever thought I would see the day that I would be exonerated. Bold is well known for her book, The Lovely Bones, which was an adaptation into a film in 2009. It was in the process of being made into a film when executive producer Tim Muchiante became skeptical about discrepancies between the book and the script. Quote, I started poking around and trying to figure out what really happened here. After dropping out of the project, he hired a private investigator, which led to the district attorney taking a personal interest in the case. Her 1999 memoir, Luckily Seabold, who is white, spoke of having a assault take place by an unidentified black man in 1981 and then later coming across a man in the street months later that she was sure was her attacker quote he was smiling as he approached he recognized me it was a stroll in the park to him he had met an acquaintance on the street hey girl he said don't i know you from somewhere i looked directly at him knew his face had been the face over me in the tunnel Broadwater was eventually arrested after Seabold went to the police after the interaction. Although Seabold failed to identify him in a police lineup and picked a different man as her attacker because, quote, the expression in his eyes told me that if we were alone, if there were no walls between us, he would call me by my name and then kill me. Despite this, Broadwater was tried and convicted in 1981 based mostly on two pieces of evidence. Seabold identifying him on the witness stand and a microscopic hair that an expert said linked him to the case at the time, which has since been thrown out by the U.S. Department of Justice. Speaking at the exoneration, Broadwater's lawyer, David Hammond, stated, sprinkle some junk science onto a faulty identification and it's the perfect recipe for a wrongful conviction. Broadwater spoke of his relief after the district attorney apologized to him privately before the hearing. Quote, when he spoke to me about the wrong that was done to me, I couldn't help but cry. The relief that a district attorney of that magnitude would side with me in a case is so profound. I don't know what to say. This story has been brought to you by Racism. Racism is accepted wherever true Americans are. Perfect. All right, so we should already know what it is. We should already know why it is that she is staying directly silent. You can tell by the picture. Um, like I said, you know, she's one of them that be sitting up here lying. It is what it is. People can get mad at the picture, but not get mad at the fact that a black man was wrongfully convicted and now just got exonerated 40 years later of a crime that he never even committed. And she directly lied in her book. Everything that she stated was a 100% fabrication and a lie. But yet because of her tears, because that she was young, 18 and free, you know, she got to do whatever it is that she wanted to sit up there and do. And she was able to make buku bucks off of the innocence of a black man who was wrongfully convicted of a crime that he did not even commit. But due to the fact of the American justice system, due to the fact of society, due to the fact of the court system and the perception of black men being criminals and always wanting to, you know, chase after such and such women, it's a believable thing. Let's question this. Was the person who even, quote unquote, supposedly committed this act 
were they even black how about that one let's let's try that one out was they were they even black <laughs> how about that like i said before it's crazy out here and she's silent because she know what it is she know what time it is but like i said before let this have been at the height of like the me too movement or something like this none of this would have ever came out up until 20 30 40 whatever years later like i said time after time day after day month after month year after year we always hear stories of black men who are wrongfully convicted back in the 60s the 70s the 40s they're now getting exonerated some of them are getting exonerated 90 years after the fact they're no longer even alive so the exoneration doesn't even matter it's like why even bring it up it's like the family already know that the man is innocent right they already knew after death that the man is already innocent why even talk about it now what just so you can get some brownie points just so you can sit up there and feel good about yourself just so you can feel like you're doing a job that you're automatically supposed to be doing okay sure whatever so now we have it here now we have the system supposedly working you're going to have some black people sitting up there celebrating and you know all this other stuff acting like it's a true victory it's not it's not a true victory up until the whole system is overturned until the whole system is basically you know checked out and sprayed down and looked over 10 more times like i said this is going to keep happening no matter how much good you can find in the system there's a hundred times more bad that's there and that's going to continue to be there because people would rather deal with the system as it is versus having a brand new system why because people are afraid of change and people are afraid of brand new things because they know once brand new things happen that it's going to be in the end of the old and in with the new and they don't want that they're not ready for that like i said before that would mean that equality would actually have to take place that would mean that black people would actually get seen as human beings and they wouldn't be uh presumed guilty before they're innocent i'm sorry found innocent because that's how it works everybody else in the world is deemed to be innocent before they're guilty black people are deemed to be guilty and have to and are forced to prove their innocence that's how it works like i said she lied at the end of the day but yet you're not going to hear all of these women groups coming out and basically saying that where's the me too movement at we all have to sit up there and say something about this didn't we just have some stuff like Amber Heard up there lying on the stand on Johnny Depp? And this is not and that wasn't the first time that she sat up there and it was that type of way in a relationship. She was also in a relationship with um, somebody else and she was abusive in that too. But yet she was able to sit up there and stand up in front of a whole bunch of women and sit up there and say women empowerment and women this and women that. And everybody ate it up. And yet she still has a job. All of those tears right she's going to be an aquaman too right she's still she she's still making money still making millions oh ain't that something let it have been a black man that sat up there and, and did that have been sitting up there lying or he was convicted of something he was in the first film he'll no longer even be in the second one or even associated won't even be credited matter of fact we're going to try to graphically change him in the first film to make sure that people know that we do not associate with this guy but they're not going to sit up there and do that to one of their own women though like i said before notice how the system works notice how when people lie about stuff they never get prosecuted they never get tried they never get judged they never receive time like i said she took 40 years away from this man 40 years needs to be taken directly away from her anybody who prosecuted him 40 years needs to be taken away from them and their families the judges the cops any witnesses like I said before, everybody gets 40 years, but like I said before, they're not going to do that. That would be too equal. That would be too much of an even playing field because if we had laws that were uh, that enabled that type of thing to take place, people would be way more careful about lies. They would be 100% certain. The people doing the forensics and the detectives, they'll be 100% certain. They'll actually be doing their jobs then because they don't want to sit up there and have to be locked up for 40 years with a lot of the people that they locked up or that they had a helping hand in locking up but like i said maybe that's just me maybe that's just me but like i said she's going to stay silent she's not going to give over her fortune and her fame to this man she's not going to do any of that 
she's going to continue to do the same thing that she's always been doing and she's just going to rewrite her lives into another form of a book and then it's going to become a bestseller it's going to be made into a movie and it's going to be on the future netflix it's going to be on the future youtube like i said before it's the same old same old it is what it is they be out here lying and their tears are real and their tears matter and the main people that's going to suffer is black men and the black community but anyways let me know what you guys think about the story and everything that i listed in the comment description below and as always peace love and stay tuned for the next video so who write them all uh, someone come around and ate the cakes yeah so if someone broke into a home and ate Mr. Kipling's angel slices, didn't take the TV, didn't take, you know, some jewellery, they took these cakes. And it was a black man.